Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for watching my videos. This video is the first video in a series of videos where we are going to talk about responsibility of the seafarers on board. We are going to take one by one. Uh, every video we will be taking one rank. This These videos are basically made for office staff who have not sailed and who are working on a ship management company and are dealing with seafarers. So they, they actually need to understand what is the job of the seafarers whom they are recruiting or they are dealing with. Let's go into the video. I have just made a word document with points so that I can uh, explain as we go along. Okay, Master. Master is the administrative head on board the vessel. Administrative head means he is the overall head. He is the administrating head. He is the administrator. Okay, he is supposed to be the representative of owners on the ship. He is overall responsible to the company for the safety of crew, vessel, cargo, property and environment. Okay, so he is in charge for the safety, crew, vessel, cargo, property and environment. Cargo is what we carry on the ships. Okay, and environment. He has the overriding authority to decide on the actions that may be required to preserve and safeguard ships, personal, vessel, cargo, resources, asset and to protect the environment. Basically what this telling is if he feels it is unsafe then it is considered unsafe the office cannot tell him you know no this is safe for example if there is a condition you know where he feels uh, he has to take an action for example he feels the anchor is dragging and he has to take out to get, get the anchor out and then sail out to the sea the company cannot tell no 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 don't do that captain we will lose a lot of fuel if you go take or pick up the anchor and sail out so please stay at anchor which is not possible okay so this is this is just a crude example which i give but the idea is that master can override instructions from the office if it is for the safety of the crew the vessel the cargo the resources the assets what they have on the ship okay master's override authority cannot be removed by anyone in the organization he is also responsible and must ensure that okay so these are the points so he has the overriding authority and now we will go point by point the hscq integrated management system and environmental protection policy of the company is properly implemented Basically, HSEQ full form is health, safety, environmental, and quality. Okay, integrated management system is basically the ship management system, the manuals what you have on the uh, ship and in the offices. You can see you will have some ship related manuals. You, you usually call it SMS, and uh, you also brief the seafarers before they go in on the ship or for the first time because every company has their own safety management system. So. The safety management system has various names in various companies. In some companies, it's called integrated management system. Some companies, it's called safety management system. Basically, it's all the same thing. It deals with the health, safety, environment, and quality. Okay. So he is he is responsible to ensure that all these policies. These are all poli this 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 is a big manual actually, but you have some policies. For example, pollution. There will be no zero pollution. Okay, for example, they can have uh, a policy on you know, safety. So they will tell ki, you should not have any injury for 365 days. So something like that, you know. So these are the policies what the company will have. The company IMS manuals are read, understood and signed by master and all on board. Basically, the SMS manual again, uh, everybody should read and sign. So that's that's the requirement and master should ensure that everybody knows what is the system basically this this book though safety management system is basically like a bhagavad gita everything all the procedures everything is written in that manual so any doubt in operating the ship you can always refer to that manual and you will get all the information uh, uh, early days these were all books basically now it's all online so you can just you will have it on a computer so you, you just search for something which you want to know for example you want to know what is the rest of us what is the ot hours anything related to you know the operation what is the maintenance uh, routine for this equipment everything will be available in this manner yeah he motivates the crew and officers to follow company's policies in letter and spirit okay so basically they have to follow they have to operate it is not only that you know they have read the manuals and signed but also they have to actually practices and most master has to 
promote and motivate the group to follow this. Orders issued by him are issued in a clear and simple manner for ease of understanding. Basically, you know, the orders which the master gives should be obviously clear. You know, there is a lot of miscommunication which can happen in verbal communications. Okay, so he has to give orders in a very clear and concise manner. He shall proceed to the assistance of vessel in persons of distress, make appropriate log entries if it is unreasonable, not necessary or impracticable to do so. Okay, so basically what he is telling is what the manual is telling that the master has a responsibility to go and help other vessels if they are in distress. Okay, if he is not able to uh, go, then he makes a log entry, uh, first I saw this vessel, it was in distress, but however because of this, this reason, I was not able to proceed for her help. Ensure the vessel complies with rules, regulations, policies, procedures stated in HSCQ, IMS documentation as well as per, as per applicable local, national flag and international statistics and regulatory. This, 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 is, this is comprising of the whole world, you know, this, in, a, in a single statement, they have told masters should follow the whole world regulations, okay. One though they have told that procedures stated in the HSCQ, IMS documentation should be followed also local local regulations if there is anything for the country for the port that he has to follow national and flag requirements that is if there is any uh, for example if there are rules for the seafarers who are indians then that rules have to be followed flag if, there, if the vessel's flag is panama then panama rules also you have to follow and international statutory regulatory requirements you have stcw convention you have marple convention all these conventions, all the rules are made and this is adopted by the flag and all these things should also be followed by the master. He has to ensure these rules are all followed. Advise the HSEQ or technical or FPD department in the office should he find that vessel is unable to comply. So basically he has to go back to the department, go back to the office and if there any regulation or rules which he is not able to follow then he has to inform the office. Keeps office informed and updated at all times of the situation on board at all matters. He has to keep a close communication. You would have observed if you are in the office. Now, now masters are actually called a postman because they write so many emails. They have to coordinate with the ship staff and they have to coordinate with show staff. He spent is most of the time they spend on emails. Ensure that reports are sent with regards to deficiencies, breakdown observed. Obviously, you have a lot of uh, monthly reports, weekly reports, daily reports, and you have online reports, you have the plan maintenance system, you have a breakdown maintenance system. All these are computer-based software. So all these things should be updated so that office knows what's, what's the problem with the ship. Motivate personal report and record and near misses. Near misses is basically, you know, uh, it's, it's a condition where it could have resulted in an accident. Okay, if the, the, for example, if there is oil spilt on the floor, so it is a, it is a uh, it is possible that you know somebody may slip on that and uh, we can have an accident. Okay, keep the vessel safely afloat and in seaworthy condition at all times. Basically, he has to ensure obviously you know if the ship is not afloat, then there is no ship. And seaworthy, seaworthy means it has, it can go in open seas, okay, if the ship is built to sail in the open seas, then you should always be ready to sail in the open seas with all the certification, condition of the vessel, etc. Vessel is manned in accordance with flag state requirements and institute, he has the responsibility that the manning, you know, it has to be as per the international requirements. Okay, so it cannot be less. So you, if you have a certain number of minimum manning requirement as per the flag, yeah, it will be mentioned in the safe manning certificate, then he has to follow that. The certificate of competency of officers crew or all endorsed by the flag state. Basically, this is flag state endorsement. We have I have made a separate video on flag state endorsements. Please go through this video. Okay, here what they're telling is basically the certificate should be valid and it's all genuine and everybody has the valid certificate for the ranks they are going to perform their duties on board. The responsibility of all on board are defined and complied with. Basically the duties and responsibilities, you know the ship has 20-25 people and everybody has their jobs very well, very well defined. Okay, so everybody, he should ensure that all the responsibilities are equally distributed. There is no, you know, 
uh, somebody is overloaded somebody is having less job or something like that it is it is all usually in the safety management manual or in this case the integrated management system everything will be mentioned every rank will be mentioned what is the responsibility what are the duties okay all new joining officers and crew are given proper familiarization obviously every ship is different okay so the master should ensure all the seafarers are familiarized before they start working on the ship the hsq procedures are implemented so as to achieve company's hsq objective the every company has a hsq objective you know so uh, as i told you in the beginning you know uh, zero accident zero oil pollution zero deaths you know uh, zero loss of cargo this these are all the policies uh, or objectives of the company okay so master has to ensure all these are followed and strictly adhered to clear understanding of charter party and or commercial terms of the voyage he should understand the so charter party is basically what it's between the agreement between the owner and the charterer this the, the document is called charter party okay so the, the relevant portions of the charter party are sent to the vessel so the master will have access to kya kya usko so he has to know all the details of the voyage what is the consumption what is the speed he has to maintain any any specific requirement for the cargo all these things will be mentioned in the charter party so he has to comply fully with the charter party so he is, he has to read and understand the charter party what is there okay the cargo stowage carriage discharge is in compliance with charter party in full load line regulations basically all the regulations he has to follow the cargo should be loaded and discharges as as per the international rules and regulations okay and also as per the charter party what uh, we have seen in the previous point communicate when necessary with commercial operator for suit operation again as i told you his his main main job nowadays is uh, communication so he has to keep a close communication with the office with the commercial operator also vessel reports are dispatched to office in good time as per hsq requirement basically the vessel sends lot of reports you have a big bunch of monthly reports coming in you have some weekly reports uh, some can be uh, you know uh, fortnightly reports something can be daily reports all these reports should be ensured that all all the reports are sent to the office regularly as per the timeline given by the office to cooperate with all surveyors inspectors auditors when is the rectification of any violation were noted he should extend his full cooperation of to safety inspectors appointed for safety inspection of the vessel or accident investigation basically there are a lot of inspections auditors who come on the ship for various reasons uh, there is a wetting inspection there can be flag state inspection there can be port state inspection there can be uh, uh, wetting inspection there can be class inspection there are so many uh, inspections and audits which keep going on there can be internal audits for uh, from the office people are coming and auditing the ship so there can be so many inspections so he is expected to assist and provide support to all these inspectors and auditors so that they can do a proper audit and if any deficiency are noted then he has to comply and complete their observations okay prepare handing over notes when signing off as per company form per 12 this is uh, just a sample i have given per 12 so there can be a separate form whatever as per the company's rules and regulations so he has to pay, make a detailed handover report because he is almost responsible for everything on the ship so he has to make a detailed handover report for the uh, oncoming uh, master who is who will be leaving him this is a very very important thing for office staff that they all all always should ensure this handover notes are given to the on signers before they go on the ship so that they can read and go through and if any doubts uh, they can go and ask ask him uh, ask their relieving master on the ship okay so but because sometimes it happens you know you don't have a long handover you, you has to sign off in one day or something so if if the master jo- joining master has already got the handover notes then it will be easy for him to clarify any doubts if he has has the authority to sign lof for salvage operation in kazil lof is lloyds open form lloyds open form is basically an agreement with the salvers for example if there is an accident and the vessel goes a ground or something like that then there will be salvage people who will come and help the ship uh, come out so if if the vessel is in not reachable area then he can sign the agreement on behalf of the company that must is authorized to call dpa cso or alternate dpa cso at all times when deemed necessary who is the dpa dpa is designated person ashore and company security officer is cso okay these are the two people 
uh, again i will explain uh, who is a dpa and cso in coming videos uh, dpa is to be uh, to explain in a very short term this dpa is basically designate person the show he has the full authority to the top management and to the master so he is like a mid term mid person where he can bypass all other you know, hierarchies and directly go to the top management in case of any safety issue or anything related to the safety management system again similarly with the company security officer any security related matters he can be directly approached by the master master to ensure all statutory class and trading certificates are valid at all times basically the office uh, ensures all these uh, inspections audits are done so that all the certifications are done but master has the certificate list he maintains on the ship and he also has the responsibility to inform the company that you know this com this certificates are all due and we need to renew and we have to have latest certificates valid certificates for all the you have you have so many certificates you know for all the machineries you have it for mooring winches you have it for ropes anything used on the ship is certified okay even the ladders whatever is there everything is certified so there are so many certificates and there are calibration certificates there are there, so every equipment is calibrated so uh, those things have certificates so there are so many certificates so he has a full list of certificates with expiry dates and also he has to intimate the company keep the company updated that this role expiring and we need to soon arrange for you know inspection to recertify the uh, equipment or you know the wires or ropes or whatever okay so that completes a list of responsibility of the master this video is specifically made for uh, the office staff who work in a ship management company however anybody who is new to shipping and wants to know understand who is a master what does he do on the ship what is the responsibilities can also watch this video okay thank you so much uh, share this video with your friends and colleagues who might also get benefited from this video and i will see you in the next one thank you so much take care bye bye